Hi there, Christian Henson here. I don't know if you saw my video last week about the demise of the EXS24 and the birth of the new logic sampler. It reminds me of uh, we lost something from our confectionery shelves in this country a few years back. The marathon bar became the Snickers bar and there was a kind of hardcore group of people in the UK who refused to call it a Snickers bar. It'll always be a marathon bar. I don't know how long I'm going to hang on to the EXS24 moniker. It just seems slightly awkward to me that it's now called sampler. What is the format? It's sampler. It's like the marathon bar didn't become a Snickers. It was renamed chocolate bar. Anyway, last week I just wanted to check that all of the features we'd learned to love and adore were still intact. And they were. And the slightly odd queer way of using things in a slightly computery, spreadsheety way were intact. So we're safe. But there's a whole load of new stuff that's been added automatic stuff, stuff that I'm told will make our job as sample developers, as sound makers, easier. The reticence I have with the word automatic is it often means easier, but rarely better. It's quicker to learn how to drive if you're not having to learn on stick. We know what auto-tune can do to a vocal, but what I really fear with automatic is what I refer to as the dishwasher effect. This is where you spend 15 minutes rinsing plates, meticulously stacking them in your dishwasher, only to find three hours later that not only have the plates not been cleaned, the pasta sauce that was on them has now been ossified into a kind of reddish anthracite that you have to chisel off. It's not the chaos of automation, it's just all of the extra work that it creates for us. Sampling is kind of quite a tiresome and long-winded process. Imagine recording an album one note at a time. And there's various different steps that I'm used to observing. So first recording each note at a time, and then noise reducing that entire recording, and then taking each note and physically chopping them into little splices that we then import into a sampler and reconnect basically with the keyboard. And today I'm planning on recording what's called palm mutes. This is when you physically mute the string and then hit it with a hammer to give a dull staccato tone. This will enable us to deep sample this piano quickly to really investigate what the new Logic Sampler's capable of. But first, let's try and stay within the domain of Logic. Basically what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna open up an instance of the Logic ES1, which is still called ES1 and not Synthesizer. Okay, so olden days I'd do this. Bounce, synth test, bring it back in. And then I'd edit these two and I'd get one of these on a beat. Let's get this on 1.2. And then I'd drag it back, maybe a quarter note, bit of title, a little bit of a tidy at the end, and then export to audio files. Back they come and there they are. Okay, then what I'd do is we'd set up a EXS. Where is it? Sampler. Zone, load audio files. What it would usually do is usually give me a, a prompt at that point of where's it importing it to. So basically I think what I've got to do now is actually auto map root note from audio file names. And that's tasty because not only has it auto mapped it, but it's stretched it out. So we've gone up there and it's kind of met in the middle there. Uh, and then what I'd basically do is have a little look at the old start point, sample start, I think those should both be 6,000. There we go. And then that should give us. And then I'd loop it, find the zero crossovers and all of that kind of stuff. So let's look at the different ways that we can automate that process. Get rid of that group and therefore should get rid of all of the samples. Yeah, group's gone. So that's now an empty sampler. So I wonder whether we can just take the bounce and put that in. So that's great. So that just drags in directly from the finder. But also, I wonder if we can just go like this. Now that's rather clever. So that's basically bounce it down and it's whacked it in there. But obviously these two notes still need to be chopped up. Split, split at notes. Well, that's all fancy. So we've got the full file and we've got the C2 and C4. So then we can go auto map, pitch detection. Right, that is really cool and very quick. 
Now, this is something I'm instantly finding really rather frustrating with the plugin is that the keys that you use for logic are still active when the plugin is open. The most annoying thing is if you do something like that, make a mistake, and then undo, it actually undoes whatever your last step was in the sequencer, which is a bit diabolical, particularly the size of this screen, how big it comes up. You can be doing that, nothing's happening on the plugin screen, but you're creating absolute carnage behind it. Now I looked at creating a dedicated plugin undo, and it kind of works, but it's a bit shonky. Undo, plugin undo. So let's make that option command Z. So if I, again, go like that. There we go. But that's going to take some muscle memory learnage. The other thing I want to try is this other automatic function, which is the uh, looping function. Loop, auto loop. Not bad at all. So that's impressive. Now I know what I'm doing. Let's just have another go at that. So let's uh, delete this group. 11.09, see if I can do this in less than a minute. Okay, so drag this on, importing, zone, split, cut notes. Let's get rid of that one. Auto map, pitch section, and then loop, auto loop. So later on, I'm going to do a deep sample of these palm mutes, but let's just start with an experiment. Two pitch centers over three dynamic layers. So that's three levels of loudness. So this will be six samples in all, C2 and C4. So here are those palm mutes. Again, just C2 and C4. And let's see how it fares with that. So pulling it in. So can I pull the audio in? Yeah, very nice. And that is actually bouncing the audio, it's splitting out notes. Okay, that's interesting. So that's just basically not seeing the notes. So let's do it split silence. And basically what it's done is just chopped off the end there. Now what I'm finding interesting about these auto functions is it's not giving you any parameters to work within. So for example, when you split silence in logic, you get all of these kind of things. It's not, not a great way to create samples, I may hasten to add. Okay, so it's not going to split automatically for us, but we've got six notes. So what if we were to just simply copy this six times and edit it within, I just want to say EXS, um, that's kind of a bit funky the way it does that. Let's see if we could just edit it within uh, this. So we've got this snap function. Let's just try the old transient. So we've got this. And then do that, and then this, and then do that. And then do so, can you find the pitch now? Remap, auto map using pitch detection. Right, it's a little bit confused there, isn't it? Remap to white notes, pivot on corner. So that stacks them quite nicely. Remap, fill gaps. I would have preferred it if it stretched down from here to there and then down from there. There's a video linked above about why I think samples sound cooler when pitched down. But let's just go with this for now. It's so difficult when playing to actually get the velocities this quiet. So what I'm going to do is just reassign the velocity ranges. For that, I'll need the list editor. See, what I'm finding frustrating, is there a logic to that? No, there isn't. So the difficulty I'm having here is that we don't have the mapper and the list view on the same page. So there's going to be a lot of going back and forth between those. Now, I always do 119, so you don't basically, if you do occasionally hit 120 exactly, you don't get two samples playing. But I think you'll notice something interesting if we have a look here. So from 1110, if I put 120, it'll automatically go in 119. So basically, within a group, you cannot have any of these regions overlapping. could do is just uh, adjust the old decay.
so there's a degree of automation in what I've done already. Uh, it's they're interesting these these muted notes. They contain a lot of harmonics, and there's not much note for Logic Sampler to. <laughs> it's just like going eat chocolate bar, chocolate bar, good peanuts and caramel and chocolate in chocolate bar. I'm going to have to come up with a name for the Logic Sampler. If it's not called EXS anymore, I'm going to call it Dave. So let's give it a fairer crack of the whip by uh, having a go at just some long notes. Again, C2, C4 over three velocity layers. So here we are. And let's just dump that in. And again, it's kind of bouncing that. we he. And then let's go split at notes. Right, that's better. So one, two, three, one, two. So one, two, okay, three, one. Okay, but it's just not seeing these, which is unusual. Okay, so let's, instead of notes, let's go split and silence. Okay, that's just, that's not, it's not liking that either. All right, so let's just do that by hand again. Let's see how quickly I can do that. This is annoying. I mean, this is, you can do this in, in contact, but it's a living nightmare. I'm loving the size of the screen. I've taken a wrong turn somewhere. Not the nicest sounding piano library ever. So whilst the auto sample thing is a bit of a disappointment for speeding up the process of sampling a piano, the key change here is that we're totally missing the steps of editing and retitling, that all important aspect of the process where you really have to organize all of these little splices so that you can implement them into a sample. So what if we were to deep sample the palm mutes, but just to keep it as a single audio file and get Dave to basically address all the different points in that audio file, as opposed to us having to splice it up and name it. So I'm gonna basically go up a set of perfect fifths, C, G, D, A, etc., etc., And I'm gonna do three dynamic layers, so quiet, medium, and loud, and then three round robins, which is basically three of each note of each dynamic layer played kind of the same way every time. This avoids the machine gunning effect. And where Dave is concerned, I'm basically gonna approach it in my own head as if we're working on three axes. So we've got the X axis, which is pitch, which is left to right, low to high. And then we've got the Y axis, dynamic layers, so quiet to loud. But then we've got the Z axis, three different duplications of that X and Y. Okay, so first I'm gonna duplicate the audio over to the different pitch centers. Now I'm snapping each zone to its corresponding note, first dynamic, first round robin. The only way I think you can really get away with this is by having a meticulously ordered session, probably indeed a lot more refined than the version I'm working with at the moment. As a default, the key root notes have been following wherever I've copied the zone to, so no tuning or reassigning of the root notes uh, necessary, which is great. Then fill gaps and copy across the y-axis, so three different dynamic layers. Then let's snap each zone to the different layer, so skipping two notes at a time to go up one layer. So now for the Z axis, the round robins. For the second round robin, I'm duplicating the whole group, then simply snapping each note up one to their adjacent round robin. Rinse and repeat for round robin number three. Now, for the last set of each round robin, it's likely as I'm moving uh, from one note to another that I make a noise. So you see how these bottom handles move the start and end points according to the snap value. Now these top ones are fade, so let's just fade the ends to be cautious. Right, now, this is gonna be my first time creating round robins in the Logic sampler, but in, in 20 years of working in Logic in the EXS. Uh, so let's have a look at group, show all columns, round robin, on, on, on. And so 
So I think for me, this marks a potential divergence in the way in which we think about sample instruments, which are usually made up of lots of little slices of audio into just a different way of working with audio within your door. As a developer, I don't see us adopting this method anytime soon. Imagine having uh, 70 people working on just one audio file. And indeed, whilst we've deep sampled to a certain degree, I think it's about 80 samples, if we were to go any deeper, I can imagine it would be a, a confusing kind of maelstrom of different address points. However, Logic Sampler does have some very clear inbuilt limitations, namely only 99 voices. So for me, it still very much feels like a tool within Logic or a composer's tool. And I have no doubt as a composer, just the attractiveness of the speed of being able to work like this will mean that I will probably finagle around within my own projects in this manner. And what I love about divergences is, is whilst we may get to the same address, we're going via a different route and there's all sorts of new adventures to have there. But before I go, Surely one of the opportunities by using a single audio file to create a multi-sampled instrument is that you could maybe mess around with that audio file? So let's add a bunch of just kind of random plugins and replace or just save over the original audio file, reboot the sample instrument and look what happens. is starting to wander with opportunities already. So thanks as always for watching. Now, I'm really aware that this is me basically kind of looking into this for the first time. So there's possibly loads of stuff I'm missing and accusations of features that aren't in there that actually are or indeed bugs that aren't bugs. I'm just using it wrong. So please do put some comments down below and I will be reading them avidly. And I think there's also some really interesting extra stuff that I want to look at. I've noticed, for example, there's stuff like enable by articulation. I'm probably going to do one more deep dive if there's anything specific that you'd like to, to know. Also put those requests. So thanks as always for watching to the end. Do subscribe if you haven't done already. Ding that bell to be notified the next time I put a video up. And one of those to the excellent team at Apple who have created I don't know, a new set of opportunities for us. So whilst EXS may have abandoned us, long live Dave. See you next time.